I knew that would be the first thing you do. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're here. All right. Good. Welcome to AMZ Seller Real Talk. Um, this one's exciting because um, I knew that at some point we were going to have the privilege of bringing uh, CEO and founder of Managed by Stats, uh, Philip yeah, Jefferson. stop it. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Yes. Hello. Curtis Johnson, Justin Coleman. So um, for anyone who's wondering where Jade is, um, she's handling Lorelei at the moment. Mm -hmm. if, if the stars align and, um, you know, things go the way we want them to, she'll be back in here any moment. Oh. If not, um, you can see her in the next episode. <laughs> ideally. Yes, <laughs> ideally, in a, in a, in a perfect world. Um, this one is going to be good because, um, yes, the, I'm sure that we'll talk about Managed by Stats a little bit. But um, what I'm more interested in is you as a seller. Because most of these guys, yeah, sure, they'll benefit a small bit hearing about Managed by Stats and the history and the story. But I think um, the number of different categories on Amazon in which you are a successful seller is probably something that is far more useful for some of these sellers to hear about. And I think that is something that people will really value from. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to help. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Um, good. So then, I guess, for anyone who hasn't heard, kind of, I guess, your story, not not just your Amazon story, let's go back to, Before. yeah, the, the the greater history of Philip Jepson. How far back do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> let's go to when I you were born. born 1973. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, You're not from this, this country. I, I, was, I was born in Denmark. I grew up in Denmark yeah. um, with a short trip. I mean, I was in Denmark till I was 18 uh, with uh, about a year and a half living in Egypt and Lebanon when I was uh, 11, 10 or 11. Um, <clears throat> and I've traveled a lot, um, but ended up um, in Florida in 84. Okay. And... Uh, then I was here for a few years, went out to LA mm -hmm. and was there for about 10 years, then to DC and then I came back down here. And, Where in LA? Um, Hollywood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And um, uh, met my wife out there and, and, and all of that and then we moved to DC for, for uh, about uh, six years, okay. six, seven years. And then we came back down here. We, you know, we, we kind of had an opportunity to um, locate the business wherever we wanted to. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got with my partners and we kind of went, okay, we either like California or we like Florida. And, sure. and then we picked Florida because it, it's just way cheaper. And, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and we could do it from absolutely anywhere. We were, we were selling um, a wireless internet. There was uh, something called Ricochet. Um, oh, I've heard of and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and they were pi they were pioneers. I mean, they had little modems that you could put on your laptop yep. and you could, you know, you could be driving on the freeway. Yep. And um, it was a, a phenomenal service. Um, I was living in DC at the time, so. Um, that was I, like on par with when the first cell phones came out. It's like, I'm in the car. Yeah. Talking. Yeah. And then you're in the car, interneting. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was very cool, and and they were ahead of the cell phone companies. Mm -hmm. So you know, they they it was uh, a uh, spread spread spectrum type service, right? Yeah. Uh, with frequency hopping and all of that, and they were, it was just very advanced. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, the cell phone companies obviously had bigger plans and a lot more money, so they came in yeah. and essentially killed it. Sure. Um, but until they did, it was fun. And, you know, I, I spent a lot of time in government agencies in D.C. So I went to the Department of Energy and, Jeez, and uh, you know, I, I met a lot of different um, agencies that, you know, wanted to have mobile Internet. Yep. CIA, NSA. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. I mean, and, uh, we definitely got into some some situations where I had to have my, my clearances. security clearances and, and all of that checked out and you know mm -hmm. um they're like okay so you are not a russian informant this is good okay yes, we can okay. carry on <laughs> so uh so that was fun um and um but then that ended yeah um in the early 2000s okay and um and and suddenly i was like well uh, what what do i need to do now and and uh I jumped from that straight and because I'd been doing sales in that and, you know, cut, I cut my teeth on selling to the government and, and, and businesses, um, jumped into another sales um, career 
which was essentially buying a warehouse worth of oriental rugs and starting to sell those on the roadside. And uh, so I did that for a number of years and, and it was, it made a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, it's surprising how much money you can make yeah. being a, you know, a, a, a roadside seller. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you're not with family. You're you're working 10 hours a day and mm -hmm. it's hard physical labor and all of that. So yep. it was fun for a little while to make a lot of good money. Um, and then I was like, okay, I need to do something. Why yeah, can't I like just stay home? Yeah, the sustainability here is not, is not a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, I came back down here. We were doing all that in Chicago. I came back here and joined a, a high-rise development company. And... Um, um, uh, became the executive director of that after a, a couple of years and then that was kind of leading right up to 2008 and then the whole real estate market imploded just yeah. before they broke ground on on actually building these things so uh, I mean, it was good timing because yeah. you know instead of instead of the company inducing you know 180 million i think maybe they lost you know 15 or something like that no big deal. Um, you know, I mean, it costs money to get all the planning and all yeah. done, but yeah. once you start, once you break ground, it, it becomes really expensive, yeah. right? And then if you build a building and nobody's buying, that's and a big problem. And it becomes really, problem. really expensive. You yeah. become the bank's best friend. Yeah. They're like, thank you for building this for us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then after that, I, I um, um, took a job in a, in a company that does first aid. Um, and went to China, helped set up a factory for that and all of that and, and kind of, you know, kept my hand in on that. And then we started when, when in, in 2013, I, I briefly kind of went, okay, I'm done with this. Um, went back on the roadside for a little bit for maybe a year. Same rugs. Selling, selling Same rugs, rugs again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and then I kind of went, okay, I need to get into building something bigger um well i can travel i can do whatever i want and still um, work and still work and and still you know see family and all of that right, right? and that's where i went okay i need to be online somehow yeah and now now so you're you're having this realization you're having this epiphany right now you hadn't found amazon yet though correct so you're you're sort of looking around getting a feel of the yeah, I, I took a briefly. I took a job um, working with a, a company that trains chiropractors, okay. and you know, doing their marketing and stuff like that. And then there was just too much politics in mm -hmm. the company, and I just went, okay, I am done working for other people. I'm going to build my own thing. I've done this before. I can do it again. Um, and and that was that was kind of the epiphany. Was I'm done working for other people. Sure. Right. And I'm going to find something. So I started looking at, okay, um, what can I do? And and Mobile apps was kind of a big thing. Um, this was in 2012, 2013. I, th I think that also at the time a big thing was drop shipping websites, custom websites that drop ship products. And you yeah. could build that up, get them doing multi thousands of dollars a month, and then sell them for 20, 30, 40 grand. I, I met a guy, I played paintball with him. He's from Germany. And that's what he did. That was his thing. And this was. So designed it for other people? Well, he would build it for himself, okay. make it successful and sell it, sell it over and over and yeah. over and over. And this is prior to the time mm -hmm. of uh, major security issues with, with credit cards on mm. websites. It was before the stigma of buying on a website. Yeah. So it's funny because you could almost, and I don't, don't, definitely don't say this in a negative way, but you could almost be categorized as a serial entrepreneur. Yeah. Did you ever do Amway? No, I did a couple of other MLMs, okay. um, and I mean, one of them that did you know quite well, yeah. and then it you know it fizzled out, but it did fine for me. Yeah. Um, but I've I've done enough MLM to you know make the firm decision that I'm not doing that <laughs> <Yeah>. again. <laughs> You're um, not an MLMer. <laughs> no, I mean MLMs basically when it. <sighs> For those of you that don't know, that's multi-level marketing. Multi-level marketing, yeah. And, and I don't even and, say it in a negative way. No, I, I mean, I, and, and it can be good. And Amway's been around for mm -hmm. a long, long time, right? Um, most MLMs that you know don't last for 30, 50 years, like Amway, mm -hmm. um, they tend to pay you for bringing people 
other people into right. the MLM, yeah. and the revenue is not really in the continuation of the business. It really is in bringing people in, sure. and that has Entry a it, like it, that. it has a, a shelf life. Yeah, you know, you run out. I mean, you run out of people that you can bring in there because only so many people are going to actually fall be, for this. Be gullible yeah. enough, <laughs> right? So, um, so yeah. So I, it's not a, a business model that I feel you know you're not really bringing value to the people you bring into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, most people will not do well with it. So you're doing people a disservice, and that's just not a, a way to live. Yeah. Yep. Right. So, uh, yeah, not doing that again either. <laughs> I think you're also probably past that point. <laughs> yes, I'm past that point too. But, yeah, no, I, so I, I got into the, you know, building mobile apps, and that kind of went for uh, you know, maybe six months or so. Um, and then uh, a good friend of mine introduced me to Amazing Selling Machine, um, which was, you know, Amazon, and I kind of went, yeah, okay, that, you know, if she can make that work, I, I, I can probably make that work too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because this is somebody I trust. This wasn't somebody selling me on something. Sure. That, that, and, um, it was like a friend referral more than... It was a friendly yeah. referral, and, and somebody that I'd known for 20 years, right? So it was, okay, this is something that I, I actually trust that the data I'm getting here is real. Yeah. And... Um, and then you know, I, I I went to 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 the website and I looked at the pitch and all of that and showed it to my wife and my wife was like, you know, absolutely not over my dead body. <laughs> yeah. Are we gonna do this? Uh, this is very very salesy and you know I had to just kind of surreptitiously sign up anyway. Mm. Um, Meaning uh, ASM's pitch was too salesy for her. Yeah, I see. So, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And it and was, she was it like it is. amazing yeah. selling machine. That sounds so corny, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, she was like, you know, you cannot, you you, you can't take this yeah. seriously, right? And um, and you know, so I waited until I think the last hour of the sign up window, and then I I kind of just went screw it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I just if I don't take this chance, I know I will regret it. Yeah. So I don't want to regret it. So sure. I'm gonna try it. Yeah. And hey, it's got a 30 day money back guarantee. It's like, how, you know, I can decide in 30 days whether this is going to make sense or not. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. And that was my introduction to Amazon, and it went phenomenally well. Yeah. And you that know, was ASM2. ASM2. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it, you know, I mean, I put a lot of time into it. Being yeah. an entrepreneur is not for the faint of heart. Yeah. It's, you know, I was working at least 80 hours a week yeah. for the first six months. You well, know? it's interesting because every day that goes by, I have more and more understanding mm -hmm. of kind of like what it's taking. It's, now, don't get me wrong. I've done MLMs. I've done my own businesses in other ways, and I've done everything <laughs> sun, moon, and stars. And so it's not like it's more work than something else. But I guess I'm saying this for anyone who's watching this that's like, feeling around trying to get an idea of if this is like something for them this is a business and it's going to take huge amounts of work just like anything else that's a real business that you can yeah. actually win at yeah it's not a job yeah it's, it's a business yeah because i've been when did we when did we first start eight nine months ago we first started talking about doing a brand together right and i've been working on it now, there was probably about a three-month period in there where I didn't do anything, but six months of solid working. And last time I checked, no money's been made on that, right? Right. I, I just want to make sure. <laughs> it didn't pass you by. <laughs> I just want to no, make we, we've been, we we've been banking, but right? you haven't been working hard enough. So. <laughs> so, yeah, so just realize that. And, you know, I, it's so funny because um, my uncle actually started a brand in that time, and he, ASM and everything, didn't. I don't know that he actually logged into the course <laughs> and somehow has a pillow on his way from China and he's starting and for all I know he could do absolutely amazing but so it's not that it has to take six months to get something going but you know the the level of preparedness can be very little to very you know great it does and, and it depends a lot on how motivated you are and mm -hmm. you know when I started this um, I had quit a job that was paying me not enough not nearly enough, like uh, yeah, uh, $800 maybe a week or something mm -hmm. like that, or, or maybe, uh, it, was, it was not very much, right? Yeah. And my wife had a similarly 
paying job, you know, so it, it was very little. And I kind of went, you know, this is never going to do anything that we want to do. Yep. It'll never get us where we want to go. So right. I just need to completely just break and start something fresh. And I was very determined and I had to make this work. It was like, you know, okay, I need, I have college payments for my kid and, you know, this and that. And it has to work. Yep. And, you know, and uh, one of the things that, ASM, uh, Amazing Sell Machine. One of the things that they kept repeating at the events was no plan B. Right. Um, you know, as, as long as you have a plan B, you know, it's kind of okay for this to fail because sure. I have a plan B you can yeah. go to. Right. But if once you decide um, there is no plan B, you are going to make this work come hell or high water. Yeah. Right. That's where you kind of, you know, you accept the responsibility of making it work, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and, and persisting, and persisting, and persisting. Yeah. yeah, and the thing is, I mean, once you are, once you own your own business, there is nobody else. It's not a job where you know, you know, if you don't do your job, somebody else is gonna, you know, they're gonna fire you, and they're gonna find somebody else and, mm -hmm. and yeah. put them in there. There is nobody else, sure. right? And and that's why it ends up being longer hours as well because you you set yourself a goal. And then you go, okay, well, yeah, you know, 30 hours, 40 hours a week. It's not going to quite get me there. It's not going right. to get me there fast enough. Mm -hmm, right. So now you put in more time. Right. And, you know, and, and for six months, I was doing at least 80 hours a week. I, I was working hard, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, was, it was incredibly worth it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that brings up one of my favorite quotes, which is entrepreneurs are the only people that will uh, work 80 hours a week to avoid working 40, 40 hours. hours a week. <laughs> right. <laughs> And it's totally true. It's totally true. Yeah. It's totally true. So, I mean, yeah. So if, if you want to start a business, just realize that, one, you have to decide that it's going to work no matter what. Yeah. And two, it, it, it is hard work. Mm -hmm. It's not in my, you know, the two-hour work week thing or four-hour work week thing. Yes. Not, not really for entrepreneurs. I mean, at a certain point, yeah. once you build sure. something up. And then you've trained people, and you've you know kind of you've gone into the next phase where the business essentially it has all the SOPs, it has all the procedures, yeah. and you have people in place, and you're not really running the business anymore. Now it's just giving you profit. Yeah, but you got to you know, get there. You have to get to that, yeah. and and you know making it profitable is one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Making it so that it runs itself is a whole different skill. And stays profitable after that. Okay, right. so two series of questions then. So. Question one. So you started in what date? Not an exact date. But September of 2013. September 2013. Okay. And we're in November 2020. So roughly seven years. Yeah. So in that seven years, could you literally walk away today and still have businesses that perpetuate past you yes. walking away? Yes. And still have an amazing quality of life? Correct. Yeah. And, and, so, and, and then the thing is, okay, so... Do you want to walk away? Sure. Right. right. And I don't know. I, I don't want to retire. I don't want yeah. to go, you know, because working and having goals is, is kind of what keeps life fun and, and keeps you alive. It's, you know, having something that you're aiming towards. And um, if you walk away and, and, and it's just a vacation mm -hmm. from then on, um, I, I don't know. You have no challenges anymore. You yeah. have, you know, it, it's. Uh, I think for me, life would become boring sure. really fast. <laughs> and people who get to that point also typically die sooner, <laughs> right? Because I got nothing I, to live for. I just, I think it's also in part the removal of the have to factor that's interesting. Meaning, like, if you at this point you're doing it for your own personal desire as opposed to. You have, like a guy who shows up to work has to work his forty hours, or he gets fired. And if he gets fired, he can't feed his children. That's a very big difference from I'm doing this because at this point I just love it. Yeah. So that's that's I guess more what I think is special about something like this is you can build up that business to the point where yeah yeah. And I think I mean I see people transitioning from you know I just want a job where you know you tell me what to do and I'll show up mm -hmm. and, and I'll do it. Uh, there's a safety in that mm -hmm. to some degree, yeah. right? Because, yeah, you're not going to, you know, your business is going to go under, yep. right? Most likely. I mean, most likely it'll can keep going because there's a business owner that's going to make sure it keeps going, right? Yeah. Um, so there is a safety in that, or at least a feeling of safety, sure. right? right? Um, 
but uh, it could go wrong and then you have absolutely no control over it right when you're an entrepreneur um, and you own your own business, um, one, you're motivated because you can set goals mm-hmm. and and then you kind of go, okay, how do I get to that and how hard do I have to work to do that and or who do I have to hire yeah, to make mm-hmm. that happen, Yeah, right? Um, you also and, have a support <clears throat> network. You can always find a support network in, of other on, entrepreneurs or even like entrepreneurs that if you come into a bind, someone's been there. Yeah. And and, can, and and they are almost always amazingly yeah. willing to share. Yes, that's the other thing. There's a uniqueness uh, to this business in that sense because it's not like in real estate or insurance or some other little bit more cutthroat business where yeah. they don't want to give you your secrets because you could be eating their lunch. That's right. This Amazon's so big, it's not. Even, it's not know. a thing, and also ASM was, I think, it took a very unique approach to this mm-hmm. um, because um, Matt and Jason, who started it, had already they already made more money than, than they needed to make, yeah. right? right? And and they kind of started with, you know, how do we help a whole bunch of people do the same? So they started out from the viewpoint of there's an abundance, there's plenty here mm-hmm. for everybody. Right. And the more people that are successful on Amazon, the bigger Amazon will get and the more successful we will mm-hmm. all be. Yeah. So it became, you know, a, a viewpoint that kind of filtered down to that whole membership of, you know, there's plenty and if we help each other, there'll be even more. Right. Rather than, you know, if you're successful, you're taking away my money. Yeah, and uh, it's yeah. still that way. It's I still think. that way, yeah. absolutely. And and I mean, Amazon's going so fast that um, yeah. and we, we have it, kind it of continues a, being that way. And we have a better view than most people that that's the case too. Yeah, sure. So. so then kind of, I guess, in wrapping in the history to now, so understood where you kind of came from. Um, in terms of all your businesses sort of corralled as one, um, where where does it sit? How large of a business enterprise do you have under your belt? Six figure, seven figure, eight figure, nine figure seller. Where where do you kind of fall in the in the mix? Um, it's a little hard to separate out because I have I mean I have stuff that's on Amazon. We have sure. wholesale stuff. I have the software business. Um, but we're doing at least tens of millions of year, you know, and uh, and uh, one business in itself is you know many tens of millions really? uh, <laughs> annually. So so I mean, it, it, most of my businesses um, I don't own outright. Right. Most of them I partner with somebody Which is else, a and I own thing. either a third or half mm-hmm. of most of my business. There's a couple of them that I own outright. But frankly, the ones where I have business, uh, partners are the ones that are doing the best. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I prefer it that way because that way, you know, I'm sharing responsibilities as well. And, you know, and, and they're really good partners. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's fun and it's, you know, you can play bigger games when you have a group than when you're playing by yourself. Yeah. Well, and I know obviously having the inside skinny on some of this stuff, but um, it's also, it's very unique because like, for instance, I have two kids. You have two kids. You have more than two kids. <laughs> um, you have but, a few more than two. <laughs> the, I, think. I guess where I, where I'm, my point in where I'm going with this is that um, as a parent, you can't help but innately want to see your children do well. And many of your business partners are your children. Correct. Which yeah. you can't ask for a more, you know, in, fulfilling in <laughs> concept of I'm in a very successful business with one of my children and I don't have to worry about that child for the rest of my life. I did a good job with them as a young child and adult and they're not crazy and they're not running around killing anybody. And now they're financially successful as well. You can't really ask for something better than that no. as a legacy. Yeah. 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 No, it, it's awesome. I mean, yeah. you don't have to worry about them and you see them just, you know, building and building and building on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, some of the kids are, you know, partners with me, and some of them are doing it on their own and doing phenomenally well, right. and you know, have their own Amazon empires that right. they're building, and and yeah, it's it's really nice to see. Yeah, that's awesome. So then, okay, now we're Amazon twenty twenty. So you as a seller, you as someone who has your fingers in a lot of different categories, a lot of different areas of Amazon, what are what are thing? What is? What would you say is the area that you are most expert in in Amazon? As the business, you mean? Yeah. 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 Okay. As a category, no, not or as a what? category, but like what? 
what is it that you bring to the table or what is it that you've become expert on as just a seller in general that makes your businesses do well? I like think, I'm a marketing I think, guy or I'm really good at managing inventory, that kind of thing. Really, you need to be good at a lot of it. Um, so I have spent a lot of time you know, with, with Amazon and understanding how their system works and talking to people inside of Amazon and how do you do this and where is this going? Um, and um, getting to the point where uh, when, when Amazon does something that um, at first blush may seem this is a huge pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. And why are they doing this? And this is so not okay. You mean uh, like Apple going to Lightning and then going to USB-C or something like that? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, things like that. But I mean, Amazon does um, continuously make changes and they yeah. test stuff. And they occasionally they'll you know come out with a, a new rule that you go, oh my god, this is so bad right. uh, for my business, and you know this is going to take me you know weeks or months to get around and right. blah blah blah. Um, I've gotten to the point where these things don't really annoy me anymore. Mm. I tend to see them as barriers to entry for other people. Yeah, I'm with I, you I on that. I know that I can get past them, and I also um, have come to see that most of the time these are not. Amazon being the big bad wolf that's trying to destroy my business. Amazon has identified some problem like Chinese sellers coming in and you know and massively defrauding people with sure. their products yeah. that they have to handle this or people are, you know, uh, massively gaming the whole review system and mm -hmm. they need to handle that. That's right? never happened before. <laughs> never happened. And um and, and these are huge, huge problems for Amazon, yeah. and they have to come up with, you know, smart solutions to them. And sometimes the only solution is, you know, we can automate a solution for this because there's millions of sellers and yeah. there's hundreds of millions of products and listings. And you know, there's no way you can hire enough people in Amazon to go through that. Yeah. So you, they come up with an alg algorithm that handles a particular problem, right? And inevitably, that algorithm is going to take you know, a bunch of good listings down at the same time as it takes down maybe thousands of bad ones, sure. right? Yeah. And and you end up with a you know something that affects your business, you know, at the, exactly the wrong time, <laughs> and and it can be very very frustrating, right? But but I've come to That's... realize that you know Amazon is actually doing this stuff for a reason, yeah. yeah, right? And they're not trying to kill my business. They are trying to handle a particular problem, yeah. and you kind of need to understand what is that problem, I and mean, then how do I get around that so that I don't look like I'm contributing to this problem. Sure. Yeah, that was very softly put. <laughs> well, it's 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 a level of insight that's really interesting because like you have to sometimes people I think lose track on what it takes to win in business in general. Like a lot of people when they go into I'm going to start a I'm going to start a business because you know I went to college and I got my MBA and I've studied for years and years the basic principles of business so that I can be successful. That's in a lot of cases to start a empire like business that is kind of the level of knowledge you have to have years and years of understanding of a subject at a yep. really high level. So it's not really too much to expect that you're going to have to do something similar to make an Amazon business successful. You gotta become very proficient in a lot of areas. Yeah. Yeah. No, you have to understand PPC, you yeah. know, the whole advertising platform. You have to understand the advertising platforms outside of Amazon that you can use to drive stuff in there. You have to understand social media now. Yeah. Um, and you have to understand all the numbers of your business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how are you doing and you know, how much are you actually making and is, is this profitable or not? And, uh, mm -hmm. If it's not profitable right now, would it be profitable six months down the road? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you have to learn a lot. And um, I, I think after the first year of selling on Amazon, I was doing about 150000 a month in sales. And I looked back and I went, I can't believe how much I've learned in the last year. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, but even now, it's, I mean, it, it continues. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, this is a very, very fast evolving marketplace. Yes. Well, and speaking of that, so we've obviously, as Managed by Stats, been doing a couple like news 
shows. I'm sure some of you guys have seen them. But like, um, it's a recent thing. I, Amazon seems to be. I'm you, not. I'm not familiar with them. Oh, you're not. <laughs> no. You, no. Weird. Okay. You'll have to send me a link. Yeah, I'll send you a link. Uh, description. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Amazon's been cracking down a lot in buyer seller messaging. Yeah. Um, what? Where do you think that they're going with this? Where do you think it's going to stop? What is the solution as a seller? What do you? What? What are you doing to combat this? Obviously, I know that we've got managed by stats, but like looking at it from a seller perspective, where? What do you see is uh, kind of the insight on that? There's a, a couple things. Mm -hmm. I think one, you need to be very, very proactive in building your customer base yourself. <clears throat> as long as Amazon is the sole owner of that customer base, there's only so much you can do with it. Um, I tend to um, use a lot of inserts mm -hmm. and or you know stickers on top with QR codes and stuff like that that um, essentially do either um, what are they called? Uh, manufacturer rebates okay. or something like that to get them to opt in to my list as well, right? Mm -hmm. And um, obviously you have to ask for that and you have to make that worthwhile, right? Right. Uh, but if you do, you can build up a list. And we have we have brands that have you know sizable email lists that we now email to all the time, and um, mostly we will send them back to Amazon, mm. right? So it's not like I'm I'm pulling all of these customers away from Amazon. I'm not, I, I tend to put them back in there. And sure. you know, we're launching a new product now, go to our Amazon listing and see it there, right? Mm -hmm. it, it makes a, a great way of launching new products yeah. because you have a captive, you know, or active email list. Um, but we also, you know, we use Minichat mm -hmm. a lot um, and that's a marketing tool as well. And you can do, I mean, all of that ties together. It's all the, the, the QR code is essentially a mini chat link, sure. right? Mm -hmm. um, but then you can you can capture email addresses and stuff like that from the people who are willing to do that for whatever incentives you, you make available to them. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that is something everybody should be doing. It took me three years of being told over and <laughs> over and over that I should be doing this before I actually started doing it. Yeah. Um, but it has been um, incredibly rewarding uh, once we started doing it, mm -hmm. right? So I wish I'd been doing it from the beginning, but um, better late than never. Like business yeah. one one. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, so so building your own customer base uh, mm -hmm. is definitely good. We also, um, for every one of our brands, we set up Shopify sites, and we actually get significant portion of our income through that as well. So we drive a lot of traffic to that as well. And of course, there you capture everybody's identity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use that to either drive more traffic back to the Shopify site or you know, also send it to Amazon. Um, where do you draw that line? Where do you go, okay, obviously. It's kind of where I want to rank. Um, okay. Because uh, we, we, we tend to s structure our pricing so we make more or less the same profit on Shopify mm. as what we do on Amazon. Really? So I don't really have a big preference. Interesting. Right? So that way, you know, Why? because on, Shopify, uh, on, on Amazon, they get free shipping, mm -hmm. sure. right? So we build our Shopify site, so we also do free shipping, mm -hmm. okay. right? On Shopify, I don't have to pay the 15% commission to Amazon, mm -hmm. which more or less offsets the free shipping. Right, right? Sure. Okay. So in the end, I don't really care whether they go to Shopify or Amazon, okay. right? It, it depends on what am I trying to rank. So you right almost now. like drive enough traffic to make sure you maintain your rank on Amazon. Yes. And then pendulum swing over to Shopify once you've achieved that goal. Yeah, and what what happens a lot, I mean, these are brands where you're building up a brand name and, and you know, it, it tends to be consumable goods on these ones, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if, if a listing goes down on Amazon, um, those guys, they, they want the brand. If they can't get it on Amazon, they're just going to type in the brand name, go to the website, and they're going to buy it there anyway. Sure. So so we see that happening. So in the end, we don't have a big preference on you know, is it coming through Amazon or not. I want both to be active, mm -hmm. but I want the Shopify site to be there anytime Amazon kills a listing. <laughs> no, oh, not kills, but suspends a listing. Sure. Yeah. Um, we, we've never actually had a listing completely killed, but we certainly have them suspended for the most ridiculous of reasons at times. Yeah. Right. And and that's just part of business. Yep. Yeah. It's part of doing business with, business with Amazon. And that is a very 
impeccable example of what has happened to us. Yeah. Except our whole account was suspended, but because we don't use the same business model, it's someone else's product. That's right. So right. they went off of Amazon, which is us. We have exclusivity to these products on Amazon. And they just went direct to the website, and we lost all of it, you know? Right. And now, if we had our own brand on, on in this case, that would be a perfect scenario where we don't then lose those sales, you know? So that's, I never really considered it that way, which is brilliante. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, it's kind of a smart way to kind of like look at it. Like, if you know that something is a certain way, there's no point in just ignoring that or right. letting it upset you or get to you. you just, Relying on hope. Yeah, right. <laughs> it kind of just, you just accept it for what it is. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the other thing with Amazon, we, we've, because Amazon has been expanding so fast since 2013 when I came into it, I mean, I'm sure they were expanding fast before that as well. It wasn't all me driving the <laughs> expansion. Um, but uh, Bezos calls you every year for Christmas. <laughs> and just want to say it again, thank you. Thanks. Here's another Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. Um, yeah. yeah. You're, you're welcome to do that, Jeff. Yeah, if you're watching. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. <laughs> now I forgot where I was going with that. Sorry. Um, it was expanding before 2013. Yeah, but so, so... Meaning that's probably driving some of that growth even on your side. Well, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. You know, absolutely, uh, when Amazon expands, um, it, it expands the marketplace yeah. and there's more people available to buy your stuff and mm -hmm. to promote to and all of that. So so that definitely is, you know, is a big part of that. Mm -hmm. um, also, there's a lot more sellers. So now you're sharing that much bigger marketplace yeah. with more sellers, of mm -hmm. course. Um, but... Um, it, it it all grows nicely. The 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 thing that it took me a little time to realize is Amazon is growing so fast that they're you know they're bringing in new people all the time to deal with this yeah. right. And uh, pretty soon it became apparent that um, I know far more than the Amazon <laughs> support <laughs> person that I'm talking to. Oh yeah, right? because they're new and yeah. Um, or they've been there six months. They've been there a year, but you know I've been in this for seven years now, and yeah. you know there's just a lot of stuff that they had and haven't had time to see yet. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, can so, you imagine if like you're you know you you run a business and you're like you know I've got this problem and I need to solve it with HR. They're solving a problem with HR might be bringing on a hundred thousand staff. Right. <laughs> And has can, been. can you imagine that yeah. is your solution to a problem yeah. and the headache that must produce on its own? Totally yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, no, it, it's chaos. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you expand, and I mean, you, you every time you expand, you're essentially, you know, engulfing a bigger area of chaos yeah. and trying to put order into mm -hmm. it, right? And uh, inside of Amazon, that must just be uh, unbelievable, <sighs> right? Because uh, yeah, I mean. I think probably forty percent growth since COVID started. Yeah. What? And um, I would. No, so in in the middle of all of that, <laughs> they they're having to expand. Yeah. And, you know. I wouldn't want to be in charge of staff training personally. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> yeah. No, just amazing. So. Uh, well, it's sort of an interesting position. If you're Amazon, you're you're you know you've got Congress breathing down your neck. You are expanding at such a rate you have a hard time even seeing straight. You're and if you're Jeff Bezos, you're already so damn wealthy you don't need it anymore ever uh, nothing nothing you don't right. need to make another cent in the, any of your generations maybe. somebody's got to pay to get to mars so. <laughs> yeah and then uh, outside I guess of you that start taking on, yeah problems like that i guess that's where that goes right yeah, <laughs> yeah and, and and that's kind of you know it goes back to what we said before is i mean these kind of people they don't retire you know yeah. they mm -hmm. don't want to retire because it's too much fun solving these you know, massive godlike problems. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah. Um, so I think my point with all of that was, you know, you, you, you kind of have to go, Amazon is growing enormously big yeah. and fast. And um, you know who Jason Flatley on the right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. From Rapid Crush. And uh, you know, I spent a fair bit of uh, time with him at various get-togethers and stuff like that. And one of his favorite things was Amazon is broken, but it's still the best damn system out there. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and you kind of have to take that, you know, um, philosophy at, at certain points is right. no matter how broken and frustrating it is, 
it has made you a lot of money yep. and yeah. it's just creating opportunities that are just you know unimaginable uh, you know 10 15 years ago if you can even just just hold on just just don't fall off you'll be you'll be fine richer than you can imagine yeah, yeah. so yeah. then okay so that that's one area we we damn we started at uh you know buy or sell messaging and now we're here but um another area that obviously is seeing a lot of evolution just constant 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 change is ppc so how okay because obviously, and we've covered this with a couple of people, that it's just I don't think there's much to know about it, really. <laughs> you, you just turn it on, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a one click deal. Like, <laughs> that, that's almost how it was back in know. the day. But that's the, how but I did the it. thing is, I mean, you know, so I I came in in 2013. Google AdWords was already way, way, way past that. But yeah. you know, I talked to many people who said, you know, yeah, in the beginning with Google AdWords, all you had to do was turn it on, and it made you rich. I it's mean, true. It, you know, it was just it un- made unbelievable. millionaires, yeah. many, right. many, many millionaires, and then they would change the algorithm, and they'd all go broke. Right. <laughs> and now someone else is a millionaire. Yeah. And yeah. and you know, so I came when I got into Amazon. I came from uh, SEO and PPC at that time on Google. And uh, and when we started on Amazon, they didn't even have PPC yet. And so I've seen the evolution that Amazon goes is, has gone through. It, w- it matched nearly exactly what I saw with Google. Yeah. Every, every three months, there'd be an update, there'd be a change, people would lose all of their money <laughs> that they were making and be up in arms about it and then it'll get figured out again, right? And then it get changed again, and it's always going to be that way yeah. on Google, on on Amazon, on Pinterest. My Pinterest ads were like a penny a click, yeah. or or less, I think sometimes. Yeah. And but it's always going to be going through an evolution, and if you're going to make money today, you got to stay on top of it. Yeah, you I'm have all. to stay on top of it. The other thing is, I mean, just like Google AdWords, Amazon is going to they've had to mature. Right, and the maturity is driven really by people exploiting the system. That's right. They finding how can we break this? How can yeah. we cheat? How can we get more than anybody else? And yep. then they have to respond to this, mm-hmm. and then they change things. They go shit. Right? We should have. And then, that. Yeah. <laughs> and then it goes, you know, another f- three, six months or whatever, and then somebody's figured out how to game the system again. Yeah. And then they have to make another change. I mean, if nobody gamed the system, it would just keep working, and yeah. it would probably work just fine, right? Yep. But, um, but they are entrepreneurs who you know specialize in gaming systems and and that's kind of their business model and right. even though it's not a sustainable way of doing a business it makes them you know god awful amounts of money when yeah. they do it in the short term and yeah. And, yeah. and they'll come back and they, they have the confidence that they can do this again yeah. and sure. again and again and they can afford to too i think you and i have met a few of those people in yes, various places and you can afford to like uh, in our circles, like ASM circles, and some of these events. No, mo- just some of the other events uh, that okay. that yeah. that we've been to, because you know we we've, we've been always going to the same places for a long time, anyhow. Yeah, and so you you meet people, you know, and is it is it like a bragging thing? They're like, oh yeah, you know, I just I, I broke Google AdWords. Blah, 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 blah. No, it's not that. It's 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 really. Um, what I find mostly is, I mean, it, they are smart people yeah. who are not afraid to lift up, you know, the mat and see what's underneath and, mm-hmm. and you know, how does this really work? And, yeah. you know, so to some degree it's curiosity of how can I make this even better, right? Yeah. And, you know, I, if you look at it, if somebody came and told you that, you know, here's a little trick you can do mm-hmm. in your Amazon business and guaranteed it's going to make you $10 million. You know, it won't work for very long. Most people are gonna go, okay, show me. Yeah. Right. Um, and You're like, you got my attention. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so you know, when somebody does this, um, they will exploit some kind of a flaw or, or weakness in the system, mm-hmm. and do it. And it's hard to say, well, that's completely unethical. Sure. To some degree. You know, it's 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 almost like computer viruses, right? If nobody had ever built a computer virus, we would have security. Uh, we would have no computer security. systems that mm-hmm. had no security on sure, them, yeah. right? Sure. So you kind of need that, you know, um, safety war games type 
situation mm-hmm. to have something really evolve and become extremely robust, right? right? Um, and uh, same thing with infrastructure. If our infrastructure in this country was not being attacked a lot, it would not be secure. Yeah. Sure. You know, and, and then, then you're just waiting for somebody to come along, you know, 50 Safe. years Thank later you. and yeah. yeah, take the whole thing or, or crash the entire country yeah. with one fell swoop, right? So, so then I guess the question is because I guess from the, someone maybe looking at it from the outside with maybe more of an untrained eye, if you were to go into Seller Central, just crack open the advertising area, you'd look at it and see just a mass complexity mm. at this point. Yeah. So what... There's a lot to understand. It's not really... How does a, someone it's not get really, a grip It's that. not really all that complicated okay. a system. Um, you can understand the you know what they have. They have, they have, uh, they have profiles. Mm-hmm. They have campaigns, ads, ad groups, and keywords, right? And then, you know, search terms, and that's that's kind of the the whole thing, right. right in there. And then they have different categories that they do these things in, and intellectually understanding what those are is not really that hard. But just like you know, understanding chess intellectually is not that hard. You can understand the rules pretty soon, but the combinations, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, just goes out the roof. And you know, yep. and, and then you have you know millions of sellers implementing. Campaigns in various different Millions ways, of different and, strategies. Yeah. And, and it you know now the complexity of the system gets to be incredible. Okay, that's a brilliant analogy. You can know what all the pieces on the chessboard do, but it's the combination of moves that makes the difference. So then, so then, what's this? Wh- someone comes in because let's face it, there are, there are veteran sellers who still don't have a grip on PPC. So what would what would be? <laughs> I'm raising my hand for right this. <laughs> So what what would be the sequence in which you would sit, like if you had a eight you're you're you know master and you've got yourself a little impre- apprentice right what are the things that you're gonna say hey master this then this then this where do you start someone I think you have to start with the basics and you just have, first you have to understand how do they put this together what is the structure mm-hmm. right understand that um, but like terminology. Start with the terminology. Okay. Understand what what the, what is a campaign exactly? How right. is that defined? You know, and what can you do with it? And you know, how can it apply to things? Good. Now, what is an ad group? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And w- what does an ad group consist of? Mm-hmm. And you know, it, it's it's really simple. It consists of an ad. Mm-hmm. And um, well, now I'm going blank. Um, <laughs> So Group, maybe not so simple, ads. but yeah. the <laughs> groups of ads in a campaign. Yeah, exactly. So um, you know, if if you get a grip on what those things are, yeah, then you can kind of go to the next level. But there really is no such thing as learning without experience. Okay, right? You you kind of have no to get in there. Tower. And, and, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's an ivory tower, and and you you can learn from that, but it's not going to give you real world experience. Right, and that's the problem. Is you know. This is a very real world because mm-hmm. there's millions of people out there trying to essentially game the system every single day, mm-hmm. right? And there's people who are just starting out, and there's people who have millions of dollars at their disposal to get, you know, very fancy computer systems to essentially do all the work for them, just like there is in day trading, you know? Yeah. Um, or Bitcoin. <coughs> Bitcoin or, mining. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, you. To become an expert at something, you know, somebody said that you have to spend about 10,000 hours at it right. to, to kind of become world class. And to a large degree, I find that is true. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, you have to kind of roll up your sleeves, dig in there, get your hands dirty, and find out what it is you don't know. And when I dig in, I'm going to find things that I don't know. When you dig in, you're going to find something else, you know, yeah. that, that, you don't know or understand, right? I and try then, generally digging with a trowel, but not a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't think there's a shortcut to it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and w- we tried a number of times to outsource it, and regretted it every single time. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it's, it's interesting that you say that, though, because like, okay. Kind of putting you on the spot a little bit because yeah. there's outsourcing, but then like for instance, we just created PBC Logic as managed by stats. Right. So where where does outsourcing fail and something like PBC Logic work? Why why is there like a difference there? One is reporting. Right. Okay. You have to be if you're providing a service like that, you have to be very 
responsible and accountable to your client yeah. on what you're doing and how is it working, right? Um, so uh, all the ones we tried uh, had a six month, yeah, I think every one of them has at least three months, but I, I'm pretty sure they all had six month minimum, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going in there, you're committing to, I'm gonna spend at least $2,000 a month for you to run my Amazon advertising sure. campaigns, right? And then they go, okay, and how much can we spend? And you say, well, you can spend up to this much. And yeah. now you're giving them a budget as well, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we found uh, in every single case, they would overspend the budget and the, you know, and, and they tell you in the beginning that, hey, we, we probably, you know, we're gonna need to spend for the first two months, we're gonna spend more than you're comfortable spending. And, you know, our system needs to learn what mm -hmm. it, you know, how it, how to optimize, yeah. right? And um, it's kind of like going to the chiropractor. He's going, I'm gonna do blah, 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 and you're gonna feel crappy for the you first two weeks like this. <laughs> while you're getting better, yeah. right? Um, and, you know, so, so it's, it's the same, you know, bear with us, be patient for three months until we make this work for you. Right? Yeah. And, and unfortunately they didn't, you know, they right. just spent a whole bunch of money and conversion rates went down and, you know, and, and we ended up paying, you know, ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 for the privilege of having <laughs> our campaigns ruined, yeah. right? Um, so uh, with PBC Logic, um, we built this because there's two aspects to all of this. Um, one is you need to, I mean, essentially selling on Amazon is a marketing business, yeah, right? Yeah. Anybody can get a product sourced and get it live and blah, blah, blah to do well. The marketing side of it is essentially mm. what this business is all about. Yeah. So if you don't know marketing, you're running a business that you don't know anything about, sure. right? So you have to understand the marketing side of it. It doesn't have to be Amazon PPC. It could be, you know, Facebook influencer or, marketing, yeah. or you know, maybe you're great at driving AdWords, Google stuff to to Amazon, sure. um, or social media marketing where you drive stuff. I mean, you, but you have to get good at some kind of marketing mm -hmm. to make yep. this work, right? Yep. Otherwise, you're completely sunk. Um, so with PPC Logic, um, we we came to the point where we get we understand this pretty well. We've spent a lot of time. We bought a bunch of courses. Um, made from courses. people who we made, made courses, courses yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, from people who really know what they're doing and, and you know make spend millions and make many more millions, right? Mm -hmm. um, who who say this is how you do it, this is how we do it, this is how you you could do it, right? Um, and after implementing a lot of that and being successful with it, we also kind of went. This is a full time job. This is more than a full time job. Yeah. Right? Because it is so data intensive that, I mean, you have to essentially, you're giving yourself a full time job of doing this, right? Yep. Or you hire somebody that you train up to where they can do it. And eventually they're yeah. going to go, this is too much damn work, right? Yep. And that's where we kind of went with PBC Logic. We went, okay, let's build a computer system that will do all the time intensive, hmm. repetitive work. Uh, where we can just tell it, this is what we want you to do, and the machine will do the rest, right? And so it's like, as the <clears> seller, <throat> you're not really PPC Logic isn't intended to replace you. It's more, it's almost like, it's almost something to execute your planning, regardless as a seller. Yes. Now, using the software is not easy to teach someone, right? right? Sure. Um, maybe that'll come at, at some point where we can just start selling it as a, you know, as a managed by stats service where you go in there and do all the work. But, it's, sure. you know, right now we're going, okay, there's, you have to understand what you're doing and you have to kind of crawl under the hood at times and, and be able to do that and know what you're doing. Be handy with um, a wrench. <laughs> so, uh, totally. And um, so we said, okay, with PBC Logic, we're gonna have this AI driven thing mm -hmm. that is executing on strategies that we set in coordination with the, the clients, mm -hmm. right, the subscriber, and we will manage it all for you on you know day to you know, day to day, but essentially we are we're looking at it, you know, every few days at your account and just going, is it doing what we told it to do? Mm -hmm. Right? And is there something we need to tweak here? 
Um, and then making sure that the AI just keeps doing that. And it'll be in there on every single campaign and every keyword and every ad in there multiple times a day going, this is what I need to to tweak, mm -hmm. right? And it'll do the tweaks. Yep. Um, and that is a level of involvement that you just can't do as a human. You know, if you have one or two campaigns, yes. Sure. But if you have 500 campaigns going, you know, it would drive you absolutely bonkers. And, and it did for a long time, you yeah. know, uh, us trying to do that. So, so that's what the idea was with PPC Logic. And then we went, okay, so what we didn't like about this when we were trying to outsource this to others was one, locking us in for six months because, sure. mm -hmm. you know, the, I, I didn't like that and it cost me a lot of money. And two, I didn't, I couldn't really tell what they were doing, <laughs> right? And whether this was actually going to get anywhere, yeah. right? So with PBC Logic, we're going to send a report out every two weeks that goes, "This is, you know, what happened in the last two weeks. Sure. This is whether things are getting better or worse. Blah blah blah. This is, you know, so so you can see exactly what we're doing all the time. And you know, there's a, a monthly call where we sit down and we go, okay, so this is what we got done, and mm -hmm. you know. Do you have a new product now? Do we need to launch another one? Mm -hmm. You know, what are we doing and what are the strategies? Are we, you know, are, we, are we trying to launch something here? Are we trying to just get profitability? Are we trying to rank? What are mm -hmm. we trying to do? Right. Right. So, so you give them your statistics, your change log, and then you discuss it yeah. for whatever changes need to happen after. Yeah. Well, that's and, you know, so, so we are trying to be extremely responsive. Yeah, and transparent. And transparent yeah. on what we're doing and not lock you in right because with PPC logic you can cancel any time mm -hmm. and and that kind of gives you know we still want you to understand what it is we're doing right not at you know not at the you know individual little transactions even our staff don't know what the AI is doing during sure. the day yeah. right <laughs> you don't need to understand that you just told it this is what I'm going for this is the the end results that mm -hmm. we're trying to get to and it's just moving things incrementally towards that um, and if things change in the marketplace it sees that and it goes oh shifts. okay you know yeah. it, it shifts with it right and and you just can't do that as a human yeah it, it kind of I guess it kind of begs the question for me um, I know that we've we've talked about this we had mark on the show what two weeks, three ago? weeks ago? Three weeks ago, um, and he was saying obviously someone below a uh, income threshold of like ten grand per month in gross revenue, it's not really right for them. But like someone who's actually got a successful business going, are we at the era or almost at the era where a service like this? I'm not just saying like PPC Logic is the end all be all, but is are we almost at the point where a service like this, with how complex it's gotten, is almost essential? I don't know. I mean, it's if somebody's out there and they've built up, you know, a, a way of handling PPC that works for them and they are very profitable. Do they need this? No, they don't. I mean, they already, they already figured out something that works for them, right? right. Whether that's setting up, um, you know, virtual assistants or you know that that look at stuff every day and or or on a certain schedule and tweak things and stuff like that. I mean, certainly you can do a lot mm -hmm. with a system like that. If you have an Excel system that, you know, you have built that you understand and that tells you, hey, this is what you need to do right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I've seen a bunch of those Excel systems and some of them are absolutely brilliant. Yeah, sure. Um, we, we still use one. Yeah. And, you know, that can get you so far. Uh, and And there's a number of services out there that, um, they will look at all your data and they'll tell you these are the things that you need to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, and we tried some of those services as well. And the, the problem with those, there's no commitment, right? So that's fine. Um, but you end up with a list of these are the, you know, 297 <laughs> things that you that need to do. You have to do. And then you have to go into Cell Central and now you have to implement those yeah, things, sure. right? And you know, pretty soon you get to, you know, complete oh utter my God. overwhelm. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it becomes so tedious, right? Yeah. yeah. So I'm on I'm on the side of the spectrum where it's like someone can do that? Here you go. You do that. Yeah. Right. You know, and and Jade as well. Our PPC being one of the things because the the way we never became proficient at it because our brands, which were other people's brands that we had exclusivity to, didn't have a margin 
for uh, advertising. Mm, right. So we never did it, you know. So now that we do have our own brands, it's kind of funny because when we started selling on Amazon, there was no PPC. And when there was, it was a, sure, uh, do that for me, you know. Right. And then our our we had a campaign running for eight, seven years or eight years where our ACOS was 8%, right. you know, and I never touched it. Mm-hmm. And that was the last campaign we did, you know, with the exception of a few trials here and there and ran, ran out of inventory and so on and so forth. So at this stage, even though we're a decade seller, I don't know PPC as well, nearly as well as I need to sure. in order to get to the point where I should be with my brands. So yeah. yeah, and especially what happened is, you know, in the last two years, yeah, Amazon just kind of went, okay, if you're not running PPC, you you're not going to rank. Yes, right, right. And you know, so it matured matured to the point where they went, you know, there's a lot of money being left on the table here if we don't get mm. people to run ads, yeah. right? Um, and there's so many people who are willing to pay for ads on any category. Sure. That you know, they just went okay. If you if you want to play, you have to pay. Yeah. And you know, and and yeah, they they didn't have to give it away for free anymore. Yeah. And and they're not. Yep. You and know? that that was actually that brings up the other point. We never had to do ads to launch a brand, mm. or launch a product. We just put it on, and then we would tell friends. Yeah. And that was about it. And then it was a success. Wow. Success. Yeah. Like it would just start going on its own. All it needed was a little doink and then down the hill it rolled and money came in and you yeah. know. And it ain't that way anymore. So today we're kind of in the 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 area where you have to have sort of a system. You have to have some something legitimate going into PPC advertising. You do. You can't really just fly by the seat of your pants anymore. No, I, I don't think so. No. I, and uh, in a way, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Again, I, I see it as a, you know, the, the marketplace has matured. Mm-hmm. Um, they have mm-hmm. a robust uh, advertising system in there. And um, now that I'm in there and I've been in there and I have figured this stuff out, it's also a barrier to entry for other people. Sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it's only a barrier for the people who will not take the time and the care to actually learn how to handle the system, sure. right? Um, as soon as somebody does that, they're on the other side of the barrier. Now, you now know, they're in. Now yeah. they're in, right? Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing with you know all the the, the gating and the categories and stuff like that. Oh, you have gosh. to apply for, you know. Yeah. Uh, I want to sell, you know, hand sanitizer. Well, no, you can't because you know one because of COVID and two because hey, it's got. Um, ethanol in it and it's flammable and right. you know I, I mean there's you know so many different things that come into yeah. trying to get the most profitable things up there mm-hmm. that you kind of have to run this this gauntlet of, of barriers mm-hmm. and the gauntlet's gotten more complex like it's w- gotten more complex when but again it you know it, it's for the guys that are on that have gone it you know run yeah. run the gauntlet and, and they're on the other side it's an advantage yep and you know it, it's frustrating when you run into it, yeah. Um, but it's kind of like okay, that's what makes this business work. And if it was that easy, everybody would do it. Sure, yep, right? sure. So and they and they did in the beginning. And they did in the beginning. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So then, closing question topic. Um, we, we've been talking about kind of like where Amazon is today, but I would say that probably a, a good way to operate in any business would be to give it a look at where it's going to be next year. Um, what are changes that you, I'm not talking like inside skinny, but I mean like if you look at and you've, you've been in Amazon long enough to know kind of like how things go, where, where are the next changes that we're going to see Amazon take? Good question. Yeah, and I don't know that I'm qualified to, <laughs> to answer that. Um, um, where is it going? I mean, certainly... Amazon is very cognizant of the fact that most of their revenue is coming from third-party sellers. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's people like us, right? Mm-hmm. It's not Amazon's own brands that are growing the most. That's uh, because they don't know how to build <clears throat> listings. 
<laughs> they probably know how to build these things, but not well enough. I mean, right, so right, so right. Sure. people that are in Amazon are not they're employees. Yes, they're not entrepreneurs, and you know they're they're going to get a paycheck whether that listing works or not. Right. right. Whereas for you and me, if that listing doesn't work, we're not making any money. We're, we're not. We're not. It. We're not yeah, feeding our kids. Quick. You know, and yeah, we are going to fix it. And, yeah. You know, we're going to take the time to split test it, and mm -hmm. you know, we're going to go out there and pay for, you know, twenty different main images for our mm -hmm. listing, right? That are all awesome, and then we're going to split test them and see which one does the best, yep. right? And an employee at Amazon is just not going to do that, mm -hmm. right? Um, and sometimes, you know, doing that on a broad scale is not always uh, good economy. Yeah. Right. Because I mean, so so we are going. You know, I know this part is going to work. I'm going to make it work no matter what, and I'm going to spend four hundred dollars on good photography, or eight hundred, or sometimes you know thousands of dollars yeah and it hardly even matters how much you spend it hardly even matters because the images are so incredibly important yeah right so we're going to take the time to do that right and uh we're going to find a photographer who does this with you know fantastic flair and artistry and you end up with something that's just you know really really appealing mm -hmm. right and um whether that helps sell the product or not, it certainly will help draw attention to the listing. Yeah, right. Sure. And then the rest of it is, you know, whatever else you do to convert well. Um, so, uh, but back to your question, where is Amazon going? Amazon is catering to third-party sellers, and um, they've been for the last couple of years rebuilding their the API. Mm -hmm. The API is how do you, you know, that's how MBS connects to Amazon and collects your data and right. gives it back to you. Um, that, you know, computer talking to computer uh, system is the API. And uh, the M uh, MWS was the existing API that we've been using for a long time, right? Um, and I don't even remember what MWS stands for, but it's, yeah. It stands for something. Something. Carry on and I'll uh, um, get a little but, Google. Uh, but that API is probably built on a system that's 20 years old, yeah. right? And it, it was beginning to squeak and creak. <laughs> and so for the last couple of years, they've been, you know, building it um, on an extremely modern platform from the ground up and making this new system work incredibly well, right? And um, and, uh, and it worked in a way that uses... Marketplace Web Service Connector. There you go. Okay, good. Never now, heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? And um, so, so they are really gearing up for that and making it possible for not only, uh, I mean, a lot of big sellers will build their own interface mm. to Amazon, yep. right? Um, big companies will do that. Small sellers, obviously building software is, is you know, can be a big expense. Yeah. That's where Cost Managed by it. Stats and, and all the filter. other tools out there come in, right? Because they essentially, you know, do this in a way that, that works for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so so that system is is being developed fast and and is making things a lot easier. And you know, they will keep making tools um, that work better and better for sellers. Mm -hmm. um, and they are supporting. I mean, when when I started Managed by Stats in 2015, there was not very many tools available at all. I believe there was zero except for Managed by Stats. No, I think there was a couple of others. Was there? Yeah, there were. Oh. Um, but uh, but it was it was brand new at the time. Yeah. Now now there's you know there's quite a few of them yeah. out there, um, and Amazon you know came up with a the developer council where they invite all these third party tool developers um, to attend and you know see what's coming next and, and stuff like that. And that's been you know until COVID hit, that was you know was every six months we would go out right. there and meet with them on that, and that gives you a lot of insight skin you know what's coming next and yeah. stuff like that. Um, Amazon's also rolling out um, something called Amazon Attribution, mm -hmm. um, which allows you essentially to track what happens with um, traffic you drive right. in from Google and Facebook mm -hmm. and, and similar services, mm -hmm. right? So that you can actually see 
what works. Are your, are your advertising dollars on those platforms, converting, are right? they actually converting into sure. sales on Amazon? Um, obviously, with PPC, you get all that data, um, but it has not been possible to do it mm -hmm. the other way. Mm -hmm. um, the, the first version of that system was a little clunky to use. Um, the, the new one is all API driven, okay. so it you know they're not building a, a cell essential type interface right. for it, but it's all um, API driven, and that is far far sleeker. And I think that's going to give sellers a huge um, boost in doing driving outside traffic to Amazon and yeah. seeing how it converts. And it's off, obviously this is going to help Amazon incredibly as well sure, because yes. there'll be an enormous amount of outside traffic yeah. going in. Yeah, people are already doing it. They just can't track whether somebody bought. They can see that someone clicked the link. They went to a landing page, and from the landing page they clicked the link, and then they went to their listing. That's but, it. But that's it. Yeah. Did they buy? They don't know. Right. And that right. connection is going to be made. Yeah. So there's there's definitely a good answer to the future of Amazon. Yeah, and and we you know we we are we kind of following that, and and we'll I'm sure we'll build something into MWS that that you know lets you track that stuff and all of that. Um, but being able MBS. being able to MBS, yeah, yeah. Uh, being able to tweak and split test what you're doing on on AdWords mm -hmm. in terms of Amazon will let let you figure out what actually works, yeah. and you know the feedback from Amazon that they're already getting on this is, is immense, you know. Oh, good. It's very interesting because it almost seems like it's not necessarily going to make things, okay, in some senses it'll make things easier, in some senses. But in some senses it's just going to broaden the gap between where someone starts and where someone can get to really take their business to that next and the next and the next level. Yeah. So good thing, because otherwise you there was just the chasm, and you just had to figure out how to jump and hopefully fly across the chasm. But right. but it seems like that again, like you're saying, you almost like someone what someone can predict is that this platform is going to continue to get more and more mature, mm -hmm. and they're going to make things more possible, and that's just it's going to keep going. Yeah. And it's like an onion. They're There's just adding layers, layers, layers and layers. <laughs> and if you want to, if you want to start selling on Amazon, buy an onion, and then that's what you have to watch do. Watch Shrek. <laughs> watch <And> Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's. I mean, everything that Amazon is doing today is building upon the years of stuff that they've learned, and the changes they make are to what they've already built. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I would say if you get into, I mean. Amazon is by far the easiest way of launching a new business, right? Because they they yeah. they remove so many of the things that a normal business has to deal with, yeah. inventory, yeah. fulfillment, and mm -hmm. the warehouses, and mm -hmm. all of that stuff, right? And and being able to scale from you know three units a day to three hundred, yeah, um, with with you know essentially no pain, yeah, other than just can I get new inventory in there fast right. enough, right? right. Um, they're going to continue evolving this to make things easier and easier and easier for people. Of course, it's a bigger and bigger marketplace yep. and more and more competitive as well, yep. but it's still by far the easiest way of building a business. And once you start building on Amazon, then go out there and get a Shopify and go out and you know start building up the other channels as mm -hmm. well so that if Amazon decides to suspend your account, which I know never happens, um, <laughs> No. Then you they know it, it's not a panic. Yeah, never. I've never been suspended <laughs> on all of my accounts, and I've also never panicked. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Very cool. Okay. Well, um, I'm sure that this is already you know a an decent hour and a half podcast to begin with. Um, We're not sorry we took up this much of your time. Yeah, and you know, it's always it's always interesting. There's the there's the two sides of the same coin of like, yeah, it's long, but this is, you know, we're talking to someone who's been selling as long as basically anyone else has been selling on the platform. Sure, I'm sure there's people who have been selling longer than you. Yeah, but, absolutely. But the, but the density is far yeah. less. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you very much for being on the show. I'm sure we'll have you on again in some capacity, maybe more specific about Managed by Stats tools, but I think it was very good to give someone kind of like a peek behind the scenes of where MBS comes from. Yeah, and it's 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 good to see that. It's good yeah. to see that. That's well, good to have a chat. Yeah, 
Oh, cool. Nice. Well, very. Uh, and absolutely, if, if starting an Amazon business um, for us has been life changing. Yeah. yeah. You know, not just on Amazon, but you know, in many, many other areas as well, because it, it really just gives you opportunities that you otherwise would never have had. Sure. Yep. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I would say jump in mm -hmm. and learn fast, faster yeah. than you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> no, just because. Um, you can study and research all you like, yeah. but you don't gain any experience until you actually have a product selling on yeah, Amazon. Sure. Because again, all that stuff is really building up to where you can start marketing, which is what the business is all about. Right. You don't want to be a, a book knowledge surgeon. Right. Hmm. Yeah, okay. where you've okay. never been in, put it into practice. Do, it, do I have to explain that one? No, no, no it's good. We'll, it we'll just, just cut it right here. We'll just, just dense let's just concept. end, end <laughs> the uh, podcast about 13 seconds ago. Speaking of end, good. Well, with that, I would say that we, uh, we, we, we've taken up all the time that I'm sure you will allow us to take up. Um, definitely uh, like, share, give us five stars. Um, you know. Six. Yeah, yeah. If you can figure out a way of manipulating <laughs> Apple to give us six stars, we'll take it. Other than that, um, we'll see you next week with another episode. Uh, take care. Have a great day. Cheerio. Yeah. Rock on.